uh, the day I'm recording this, there's another uh, trillion dollars worth of um, support or help that um, government is sitting on to decide whether they're going to roll out some additional benefits due to the, the COVID crisis. Um, I'm not going to play the game. I'm not going to, uh, you know, yay or nay or whatever the case may be. It's outside of my control. But what is inside of my control is how I deal with this, this crisis and this situation going forward. And to be very frank with you, a huge population of our country um, is ill-equipped Ill and uninformed uh, when it comes to the, the challenges that, that we're facing. This isn't, uh, this isn't a humorous conversation anymore. There's no, there's no um, pleasantries attached to it. Um, it's, it's pretty dire, it really is. Um, you know, somebody reached out to me on social media and they were asking me about, you know, how, why, are you, why are you doom and gloom? And it's not doom and gloom, it's, it's freaking intelligence. Um, it's understanding what is going on, taking a look at the data, and then determining for one's own self whether their current plan of action is going to work or not. Um, and if they can be honest enough to look at it, and for some folks say it's not going to work, then look for alternatives. Um, so I'm going, to, I'm going to do the data thing right now. I want to show you a couple of things. These are tools that I consistently use to, to get a, a, a pulse on where we are financially um, and to then assess my own plan of action to make sure that I can compete with what's coming. One of the first places I go to is um, the usdebtclock.org. Um, this is the lifetime uh, website for our financial checkbook, if you will, in our country. Uh, the first number I see there is the US federal tax revenue. So that's the money that we make as, as a country. Uh, that's our tax um, income. Uh, one would think a healthy number, 2.3 or almost $2.4 trillion in income. Uh, if you looked at if you looked at the United States as a business, that's uh, that's a pretty substantial income coming in there. But you know, every business has income and expenses. So what are we spending? If we're bringing in 2.4 trillion, you know, we should be paying attention to what we're spending, which is where most people don't pay attention, because as it stands right now, and this is live uh, while I'm recording this, we're at 5.1, almost 5.2 trillion dollars in spending. So we're bringing in. Let's just hit it one more time. We're bringing in almost 2.4 and we're spending 5.1 or 5.2 trillion. Now, I don't know about you. To me, that's a problem. Uh, we know what the resolution for the government is to do is to print more money, devalue currency. But they're even talking about putting another trillion dollars worth of debt on our country. So the U.S. Uh, federal spending deficit potentially has, uh, has the chance to jump another trillion dollars um, very, very quickly. I get it, we're in a crisis. I don't know if this is the right answer. I really don't, I'm not gonna go there. But what I am gonna do is focus on some of the challenges that this brings for us. And primarily, what does it look like to be able to, to retire in our country? This is a number that very few people pay attention to. It's called unfunded liabilities. An unfunded liability is a promise to pay, and our country has promised to pay $153 trillion worth of something, a promissory note. And the promise is this, Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, retirement, and then all of the other expenses that they carry, which are based off of a promissory note or a promise to pay. It's an unfunded liability. There's a lot of debt. I'm worried about the next generations coming forward. I'm worried about what it looks like for my for my kids. Uh, pay attention, I guess, right? Just pay attention. Um, here's here's the, the next challenge with it, is the fact that many Americans don't understand um, what, a, what a long game looks like, a retirement plan looks like. You know, they're relying on, on somebody else to make those decisions for them. Again, no right or wrong, but 401ks and retirement plans through employers. And it doesn't matter whether you're a high earner, a medium earner, or a low earner, uh, the biggest majority of our country follows the same plan. And what they don't realize is, is that this plan doesn't necessarily fit into the long-term goal of retiring. And what you see on the screen right there is what's called the rule of 72. And the rule of 72, as you can see right there, says 72 divided by the interest rate that your money is working at, right? 
will tell you how long it would take in time for your capital to double. So how much money do you actually need to get to the finish line? Now, most Americans, their number one fear is, you know, having their money die before they do, which uh, isn't humorous in the slightest. So you, you might want to ask yourselves a question. What is my capital working at to be able to determine how long it takes for it to double? You know, I've, I've learned a long time ago to uh, make sure that I'm always investing at a minimum, a minimum, I would say, of around, you know, nine to 10, if not 11 percent with the cost of inflation, cost of goods, cost of, of just living in this country and on this planet. Um, will I have enough to get to the uh, to the finish line? So, look, I did this for two reasons. One, for awareness. Two, some people just need to be slapped into reality because um, they don't pay attention to the numbers. And if you start to look at where we're at and where we're going, um, preparation needs to be now. So, look, I'd like to know what you think about it. I'd also like to know whether you've even seen this website before, the usdebtclock.org. Um, it's not something that they're consistently parading in the media. Um, was that the first time you've ever seen the rule of 72? 72 divided by the interest return on the capital invested will tell you how long it takes to double that capital because we're always looking to get money up and working. So on a call last night and start to talk about, you know, projected rates of return at uh, eight to 10 to 12% cash on cash. Well, what does it look like if you could get a 12% return on your capital year over year? How much time would it take for your capital to double then? And in some of the investments, we start talking about 20% plus in internal rates of return, targeted rates of return for investors. It substantially can overcome the challenge that, that's in front of us right now, the debt that pulls us down. So anyway, um, I did want to scare you a little bit. I'd like to, uh, I'd like to get your opinion on it. And uh, you tell me whether, whether you're in a good position or not. And if you're not, what could you do about it? All right, take care. Bye.